Got us ReZero Season 2 full recap this time. Season 1 was nice. Give me Season 2 summary because I am lazy. Set where Season 1 set the stage and developed Subaru through immense suffering, Season 2 confronts the past while also developing Subaru through immense suffering. I feel like suffering is a common thing that's just not gonna go away for our entertainment. This time it's not just him going through it though, as Amelia and the others all get their fair share of the spotlight. <laughs> so if you're looking for a refresher just like how I did with Season 1, well, here's everything that happened in Season 2. Let's get started. The but story first, picks up no immediately ad. after the fight with the White Whale, showing the unfortunate fate of both Rem and Krush. Rem got away with like voicing like five lines. How, whatever line she did in, in, in episode one, yeah, there was a couple more. And then after that, it was basically just like Rem through Carmilla or Rem through like future or like past through the trial. She was the biggest winner of ReZero. And her ass still sleeping. Season three, she's still on payroll though. She collecting them paychecks. They were confronted by greed and gluttony two Sin Archbishops who will be taking center stage in Season 3. Now, is Lai Baikentos the actual bastard child of Theresia von Austria and a beast man simply due to Lai's teeth being jagged, Garfield's teeth being jagged, and <laughs> blessing of the Grim Reaper bullshit, right? Wilhelm has an injury that, doesn't, that opens up when seemingly he showed up, and Wilhelm was a terrible husband. That's the, only, that's the only logic I have for this stupid theory. Krush got off easy by only having her memories taken while Rem's ex- Why did Krush only get memories taken while Rem got name and memory? I understand why they wouldn't kill them, right? To Regulus, he can't be bothered. He wasn't even there for a fight. Bro's just fucking around. Lie though, I think it's... It's like more cruel if he erases their memories, right? Probably something about it because he gets full off with those name and memory. He eats it like the concept, and then he's probably enjoying the suffering that happens to everyone around that forgot them. But they wouldn't even know that they got forgotten, you know? They would never even know who Rem is unless you're closely associated with the witch, like Subaru. I don't know. Existence was completely erased. Whatever Lai did, he completely removed Rem from everyone's memory. 13 year old, everyone, by the of way. course, except for Subaru. Such news was more than Subaru could handle though, so in an attempt to go back and do things over, he tried to save Rem the only way he knew how. There's a crazy revelation that Biako within the hidden library might still know who Rem is. I think that might be web novel cut content. There's like some passes, some dialogue that hints that Biako still knows. And I'm like, what is it due to the association with the witch echidna? I don't, I don't know, but it seems like Subaru still knows even though everyone else doesn't know. And what's special about him, other than being main character, and neat, and isekai? The association with the witches? Unfortunately, his checkpoint had already updated, leaving Rem comatose pretty much indefinitely. So, if Subaru wanted to save her now, then the only way to do so was to defeat Gluttony, one of the key motivations currently driving him forward. I think that season 3 is like the perfect opportunity to beat Gluttony in this like Marineford like war arc. I'm pretty sure he's participating based on the cover pictures, right? Regulus, Gluttony, right? Lie. There's like this bird girl with like a G string thong who looks like Luminic and Royal. And then there's like the mummy dude, right? Like it, the stage is set. All we gotta do is execute. And then is Rem back? I don't know. Are we gonna get the witch factor of Gluttony then within us? Maybe? Will those. Which factors also choose Subaru, just like how Sloth did, and then Subaru will continue to like collect, unite all the witch factors, like the uniter he is, Pleiades. The next day, Subaru returns back to the mansion, only to find now he has to go to Sanctuary. Reason being that neither Roswell nor the villagers have returned from it. It leads Subaru and Amelia to embark there themselves, all thrusting baited. them into a new adventure to save the villagers. This is because a barrier surrounds Sanctuary trapping mixed bloods inside, and the only way to remove it is to overcome Sanctuary's trials. And if you really think about it, Echidna planned this from the beginning in order to achieve Project Omega, you know? Like, she wrote into Razal's grimoire to do all these steps, which seemingly was helping him reach his goal, but at the end of the day, it's for the barrier to go away? 
It's for Amelia to clear the fucking barrier. That's that's the clever plan, and she's out. So the moment Amelia stepped one foot into Sanctuary, she too became trapped until those trials were completed. That's right. Rather than two steps ahead, <laughs> it's it's four hundred steps ahead because. 400 is a nice number in Reezer that just always goes back to 400 years ago. Now, Sanctuary wasn't very much of a sanctuary at all since in actuality, it's the witch's graveyard. It's the permanent resting place for the Witch of Greed, Echidna. Her tomb is where the trials of Sanctuary are held and aside from Subaru, only mixed bloods have permission to try them. Mm -hmm. So Amelia sets out to do just that, but after something goes wrong, Subaru rushes in and gets to try the first trial himself. Here we're shown the life Subaru left behind, the guilt he feels for disappearing on his parents, and the overall pain of never getting to say goodbye to them. Man, the parents are still looking for him. In my head, that timeline back on Earth has stopped. Yup. In order to cope with feeling bad about the parents still looking for a Subaru, if we ever do make it back, it's gonna literally be when we step outside of the 7-Eleven. Yup, that's my headcanon. It all leads to Subaru understanding more of his insecurities, while at the same time helps him gain closure over the emotional scars of his past. It definitely wasn't easy to do, but the encouragement from his parents dissuaded his doubt and filled him with confidence. It helped him realize he's loved for who he is rather than what he does. Yo, can we talk about the mom though? Not how, how hot she is, but the, the mean looking eyes that Subaru also has, and how Fortuna also has mean eyes, and I'm like, is there anything deeper than that? Is there any incest theories about Subaru and Amelia popping up? Rather than what he does, leaving him with a renewed sense of purpose at the end of it. Amelia's first trial didn't go nearly as well though, as her failure to complete it left her emotionally broken. A state we soon find out Roswell wants for her, since everything up until now were all things he let happen. Mm -hmm. He let the witch cult attack and hid information from Amelia because he had faith Subaru would succeed in his stead. Yep. It's the first hint that Roswell knows Subaru can return by death, and it's- I wonder at which point he realized he can trust his need, because like, it is still a crazy thing to just believe in this random kid that popped up until you see some like- merit right what has he accomplished i think that pretty much at the end of arc one and when he showed up at the mansion roswell was like wow this actually worked there is a strange kid in that weird track suit that showed up at my mansion after I, I listened to my book this is crazy okay what's next but at that point when he was like talking to ram late at night and they were being suspicious and roswell was like you know doing this motion as if we should take them out and ram was like playing defense for subaru and ram saying they're just kids right at that, at, by Arc 2, he still wasn't convinced yet. I guess by the time that he solved Arc 2 and he landed down with Ul Goa, right? Saving everybody and just <laughs> carpet bombing the witch fiends in the forest. At that point, he was like, yep, okay, okay, this is getting really good. And by the time Arc 3, right? It's like, okay, you've subjugated the white whale. This is fucking retarded. This is actually stupid what you're doing. You're performing miracles. So I think it's between Arc 2 and 3 where he was like 100% confirmed and now he's just like, yep, YOLO, gonna throw my life away every timeline. It sets the stage for the schemes to come after. It's after that that Subaru returns to the mansion with some of the villagers, only to be killed by a certain bowel hunter. That in turn leads him to rush back faster in the next loop, but such additional effort proved futile since the Petra, outcome no. was the same. I mean, Elsa by herself is certainly one thing, but the addition of a deadly mob beast made surviving even harder. And remember, this is separate. We still don't know which other group hired Mady. Because Roswell did not hire Mady. There's some other faction involved with this. It's a secret that we still don't really know yet. Fortunately, Subaru does barely escape into Beatrice's library, but the reveal of her compliance to the gospel makes her unwilling to help. We're shown that Beatrice only does what the gospel tells her to do. Subaru's then killed once again by Elsa, returns by death back to the tomb, then meets with Garfield and Ryusu where a bunch of exposition is given. No, oh, this is fucked up. <laughs> this is when they kidnapped us and put us in the fucking cellar. As it turns out, the barrier only affects those who are pure half-breeds. So if Garfield wanted to leave he Sanctuary, leave. he fully could given he's only quarter a quarter blood. beast human. Subaru then tries to convince them to let him take the trial in Amelia's place, but this just results in Subaru getting kidnapped. You see, in addition to Garfield's massive distrust towards outsiders, 
Subaru's overwhelming scent of the witch just reinforced that. <laughs> this is still funny to me. This is less scary and just more funny when she's the Witch of Envy is swaying back and forth. And I don't think that this is Satala at this point, right? Satala and Witch of Envy are two separate things, just like Echidna and Witch of Greed is now due to the, you know, <laughs> resurrection of Omega. But this is Witch of Envy. Enter Otto and Ram as his unlikely saviors, and that brings us to a showdown between all four of them. Otto hype. Unfortunately, this too was a futile effort on their part, as Garfield's tiger form was way too strong. This jacket is way too strong. Whatever, uh, not jacket, I, what, this, this thing around his waist, the pants, Hulk pants, it never rips. It just extends fully and shrinks backwards. So, Subaru once again barely survives, Patrashka. only to meet yet another gruesome death. This time the most grisly in the entire series as a pack of flesh-hungry rabbits eat him alive. Ooh. It's this combined with the recurring sight of seeing those he cares for die that causes Subaru's frustration and despair to finally overwhelm him. I think that even like before this, what was this part? The kidnapping part? That made me realize that like, okay, we can die and return by death. But what if they prevent you from dying, right? I think a nightmare... Like, like, Subaru's return by death is not perfect by any means. Not only is it scary to abuse it due to the trauma and, like, people being suspicious of you, while sometimes it has to do with the witch's miasma, sometimes it has to do with how do you just know this information. If you were put in a position, like, you're just, like, locked up, you can't even, like, kill yourself, you can't even bite your tongue, you're done. And then imagine so much time passes by, and I don't know exactly how a new checkpoint would be established because Subaru himself hasn't, like, accomplished or overcome some sort of like hurdle. But what if a checkpoint gets established and it's just like shit, right? Stuff like that is now super scary. And if his mind broke here, like the soul, if the soul breaks, you're dead, right? Your flesh damaged, sure, you can return by death and reset. But if your soul takes damage, if your soul, soul gets shattered, it was pretty much implied that if that happened at the witch's tea party, you, you, you're done. And that's kind of part of why he was kind of willing to do it at that time as because he was like, this is too much. And then another thing is the, the contract, the oath, right? The oath sealed by a curse that Roswell shed at the end. If we lost a bet, that would have been etched onto our soul. And that cannot also be returned by death. That's with you forever now. They were emotions powerful enough to earn him the qualifications to re-enter the witch's tea party. A pivotal moment allowing Subaru to finally reveal return by death to someone. I knew that I was right to feel off about this moment. Everyone was just popping off and screaming about how amazing Echidna was, but in the back of my mind, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking, this bitch is gaslighting and manipulating us. She is a witch. She just wants our knowledge and our power. And I was like, even though this is a monumental moment, a cinematic moment, or she's accepting and Subaru has someone that he can tell, like, this truth that he couldn't tell anyone. I'm like, I don't buy it. The two then discuss his powers, the Great Rabbit, and how to approach his current predicament, ultimately leading to these conversations with the other witches. Mom. Mom. Emilia's mom, maybe. It, it feels a bit too obvious at this point. Maybe grandma, I don't know, but it could be mom or mama, I don't know. ...with the other witches. It was by the time that Subaru was done though that Satella's shadow had manifested outside and destroyed everything. Mm -hmm. Garfield and the Ryuzu clones would try to hold her off, but even they weren't enough to stop Satella from getting to Subaru. It had left Subaru with no choice. But this is not Satella. I, it, it, I don't know. There's no confirmations. This show, there's, there's, no, there's nothing as an absolute. But since we knew that we know that Satala and Witch of Envy are two separate personalities due to incompatibility with the Witch Factor, I just feel like this one isn't the Witch of Envy. But the girl that we meet when she swallows up in the shadows, I feel like that is Satala. And I feel like the ones that we also meet at the tea parties, that is also Satala. I'm getting to Subaru. It had left Subaru with no choice but to restart, but not before- This, this is Satala right here. Or first seeing what Satala- I'm pretty sure this one is Satala, deep inside, but the outside that was like, Witch of Envy. In my- It's my headcanon. I don't know if it's absolute, but to me, whenever it feels like I'm feeling sorry for her, or if she's feeling less fucking crazy, 
it feels like that's Satala, and whenever <laughs> she's just all, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, and she's chasing, that's the Witch of Envy. Tala looks like. This shakes Subaru down to his core, leaving him an emotional mess right in front of Amelia. An interaction that was actually quite beneficial to her character, since what was a moment of weakness for Subaru actually went to strengthen her. Subaru's then brought into the loop about the whole Ryuzu Akidana situation, which was basically a massive experiment to gain immortality. It's after that Amelia opens up about and it was, right? It, it, it was the immortality experiment. And at the end of the day, it all fucking played into how Echidna overcame her death, right? Shima got kicked out. It, it, fucking Echidna's in there and it's now Omega. That's, that's just crazy. It's after that Amelia... And I guess she used that technique of compressing her <laughs> file, right? Because she has so many terabytes of information. But... Back then, when they tried it first, it was failed because the vessel could not contain such volume of data. But this time, she compressed it all. <laughs> she has WinZip now, and uh, it's working. Yeah, opens up about her anxiety, giving Subaru the opportunity to... Windows XP background tea party. Compressing WinZip. The, the memes just makes itself. ...support her emotionally. Subaru then leaves for the mansion a third time, confronts Beatrice over her submission to the gospel, then finally discovers the truth about what she'd been doing here. She'd nothing. been waiting 400 been years for nothing. a single person, bound by a magical contract forcing her to stay until they got here. You know, I'm just starting to realize that while she did waste her time just doing fucking nothing for 400 years, if she didn't and she didn't stockpile mana, we don't really have an answer for the Great Rabbit at the end of the finale, huh? Think about it. The Al Shamak was only possible due to the 400 years of stockpiled mana. It's presumed that this shit's never been used before because of how great of a condition it needs. If so, thank you, Akitna. Are, are we supposed to thank her? No, I'm sure there's different ways she could have gotten the mana throughout those 400 years without being stuck here. There's there's no way being stuck here was an absolute good thing for the rabbit person was never actually going to arrive though, so Subaru begged for Beatrice to join him. The thing is, whether out of emotional conflict or a belief that she was undeserving of it, this so-called companionship wasn't something she was ready to accept from anyone. This showed Subaru he wasn't yet at the point where he could save Beatrice, leading to another failed loop, this time far oh. worse than all the others. Oh. Amelia's psyche had been shattered after being pushed the kiss over the of edge. Death. Beatrice killed at the hands of Elsa. Ram and Garfield murdered by Ross. I love this scene, bro. This is one of the most peak scenes of season two, bro. Holy shit! This is the moment when it's just like, okay, no, no, no. The one there's another moment right before this. There, there was the run where Satella basically consumed everything. The, sorry, the Witch of Envy did. And then Roswell hint in the saying like, you know, if it's hell you wish for, then I, I'll like try for it. If, it's, if you want to walk down it, I'll walk with you. Like try not to make any mistakes next time, Natsuki Subaru. Like, oh, that post credit scene was fucking godlike. Into this scene. And then he just like beats the shit out of Subaru because he doesn't know how Return by Death is activated. Roswell, then the Great Rabbit closed. Best magician in Lugurika my ass bro is physical and that's the craziest thing. And let me give you an example of Sung Jung Woo in solo leveling. Why? Because Sung Jung Woo in solo leveling is now presumably a fucking necromancer. Right? But necros suck at melee. Right? Their entire thing is they summon soldiers to fight and their weakness is melee. But this dude already built up melee range throughout all of season 1. And that's why he's a perfect package. Take that example put it to Roswell. This dude is also fucking Jackie Chan on top of being fucking magic dude, you know? It's crazy how <laughs> the greatest magician also has martial arts on a caliber of probably greatness. So he's a full package too. Garfield murdered by Roswell, then the Great Rabbit closing in fast. Right before they do though, it's here Roswell reveals that this was all part of his plan. Mm -hmm. Everything that's been happening, he's been doing to manipulate Subaru. He's assumed Subaru could restart from the very beginning, and has been using that to his advantage to achieve his goals. So, one creepy kiss later, and another restart, leads Subaru to- That kiss implies that this Yandere Emilia wanted babies. Right? It does. 
Because a kiss is when you become pregnant. Hmm. ...and another restart leads Subaru to beckon for Echidna again. This time he's shown the unthinkable present, each representing a timeline where things were different. Oh, I love this. A rem-disguised witch then awaits him at the end of it, saving him from what would have been irrevocable mental deterioration. Carmilla, and if that mental deterioration happened, I wonder if his soul just shatters and he ceases to exist anymore. Or if he just kind of like becomes like Amelia. Because the reason Amelia went just fucking bonkers, right? Is because she repeated the trial over and over again. In the anime, it didn't show you, but in the light novel cut content, she spammed that shit because Subaru quote unquote abandoned her and felt lonely and she felt like she needed to do something by herself, but she kept failing and then her, her mind just broke. What happens when his mind breaks? Oh, we've kind of saw it in like episode 15, but I'm talking about something beyond that, right? I, I don't think season one, episode 15 is enough. Like, like w maybe we'll find that in arc six because people call that like true suffering too. Echidna then tries to offer Subaru a contract, but not before first being warned by all the other witches. In the end, Subaru decides to decline it since the contract with her would lead everywhere but the optimal path. That's when Satella in- I wonder how the contract here also played in part with Project Omega. If Subaru did create a contract with the Witch of Greed, and then Echidna also resurrected out of the cave like Jesus Christ, right? Through Ryuzushima's body. Then what? How does that work? Is it mutually exclusive things? I don't know. I don't know. But the optimal path. That's when Satella invades Echidna's dream. Another interesting thing is how the Witch of Greed and Echidna are obviously different people. This is the Witch of Greed. This is the confusing part, right? Just like how Satella and Witch of Envy separate, like this is Witch of Greed and then the corpse outside with the Moyai nose that died 400 years ago. That's supposed to be Echidna. Two separate entities. Everywhere but the optimal path. That's when Satella invades Echidna's dreamscape to give her own opinion too, revealing that all she wants is for Subaru to save himself as well. It's a big point of contention between all the witches, since on one side you have those who support Subaru's decision to ignore Satella, while on the other there's those who want him to accept her. In the end, the side wanting him to accept her win out, forcing him to realize he too has the right to live as well. Hmm. It's an important turning point for Subaru's character, since it has him see return by death isn't this crutch for him to stand on. Yeah, you can just It's live, not this bro. common card he should be playing whenever he wants to. But that's like a skill issue thing, you know? <laughs> it's like, should I be spamming it to like, um, sacrifice everything and, and, and listen to Roswell? Or should I just try always to save everything? And then we have the whole straight bet. Subaru realizes that he does not need to rely on this. He can rely on his friends and allies and we get our own answer. This all helps him to understand himself and Satella better. Mm -hmm. Enough to realize that she might not be the villain that he thought she was. Now, is Satella Minerva's daughter? Is Amelia Satala twin sister? I don't know. I'm just trying to come up with some bullshit theories here. And people say like, how could Amelia existed pre-Calamity like 400 plus years ago when it's been told through the past that she's like 100 something years old, right? 114 roughly because by the time we see Trial 1, right? She's already in Elior Forest as 7 years old. But what if she was frozen before that too? Or better than being frozen, right? Because if you're frozen, you still grow a little bit, tiny bit. That was mentioned, right, in Frozen Bond. I think time travel answers it very easily. Bullshit answer, but time travel definitely exists. And to send, like, a little <laughs> fetus Amelia <laughs> into the future, I could totally see that too. If we're going to stick with that Minerva is somehow the mother of Amelia and Satella is a twin sister. Who knows? Or maybe this is somehow a futuristic version. I don't know what the hell is going on with Satella and Amelia. Maybe this is some kind of, kind of different timeline, futuristic version of Amelia. Who knows? ...to realize that she might not be the villain that he thought she was. In any case, it's after that Subaru awakens to find he's been stripped of his privileges to enter the tomb. He then visits... <laughs> Echidna mad. Rejected. Echidna literally is turning away. That's how mad she is. Her ultimate plan to get the greed contract... Dead. Got rejected. And then later on, he also kisses Amelia in her own graveyard and vandalizes her graveyard with, like, cheering pictures. ...that he thought she was. In any case, 
It's after that Subaru awakens to find he's been stripped of his privileges to enter the tomb. He then visits Roswell to inquire Straight about bet. other options, bringing us to the reveal that the mansion assassins were his idea. It was all solely to strengthen Subaru's resolve since, by having him choose between Amelia or those at the mansion, it forces him to make a sacrifice he can't take back. And you're not really wrong, right? While we did make a resolve, we didn't have to sacrifice anything. We figure out a way to save both, which is an answer even better than what Roswell was trying to force out in my opinion. This is once again all to perfect Subaru and turn him into a tool <laughs> that Roswell can use. This, this is probably one of the funniest scenes. <laughs> Roswell just beating the shit out of Subaru because he doesn't know how Return by Death is activated. Come on, use it. Come on. Aren't you, aren't you hurt? Aren't you tired? Come on. Roswell can use for his own goals. Obviously, this was quite the shock to Subaru, but after a bit of help from Otto and a newfound resolve to fight back, Subaru decides to confront Roswell head on. But the fucked up thing is how in the cut content, Amelia had a huge moment of helping Subaru too, but in the anime, it made it look like Otto just like was basically <laughs> a rem in episode 18 to build Subaru up here. They just cut the Amelia stuff off. A bit of help from Otto and a newfound resolve to fight back, Subaru decides to confront Roswell head on. He creates a bet where if he can save Straight both bet. the mansion and sanctuary, then Roswell will have to support Amelia in full. This forces Subaru onto a path where he needs to save everyone, starting of course with those closest to him. So first he helps Amelia <laughs> get her resolve back, beats Garfield with the help of his- <laughs> And a kid is watching the entire time. That's the, that's the craziest thing. She's, she's watching this. He's like, oh my god. Are you fucking serious? Now, is, what, what, what if they're related somehow, bro? What if, what if they're somehow related? You know? And the only evidence that we have to work with with that theory is somehow that, like, they got mean eyes, right? Fortuna side has mean eyes. Subaru and his mom has mean eyes. That's not enough. There is no way. Is there any other logic for the incest theory that I'm missing out on other than the mean eyes? I, I, I don't know. The basketball? We forgot about the basketball. Holy shit. It could be Hoshin of the Wilderness's gift to the Elier Forest. I don't know if that's even fucking possible, but there is another Japanese dude in this world that pretty much created Kararagi, right? But there is a basketball in Amelia's house. And that's very strange beats Garfield with the help of his new sloth witch factor power, then recruits him to their side to fight against Elsa. That's right. In the meantime, I wonder how limited this power is going to be for Subaru in season three, because now we know that him and Biko just using Alminia or Al Shamak, it's not going to happen in season three. We're out of mana. We need a separate battery. If we don't have that battery, it's GG. But we have this. We have the authority. But every time he uses it, I'm pretty sure it's very stressful on him too, right? There's this like incompatibility issue with the witch factor. But here's the interesting part. He is compatible. It's just there's like a spectrum. And the compatibility is not proportional to the power of the authority. Regulus is extremely compatible, I think. And his power is very OP. Betrigus is very incompatible. His power is still OP. Subaru is compatible, quote unquote. But the power is fucking weak. It has nothing to do with proficiency, as in how much time you've had the authority and use it. Because we see in Trial 1, Betrugus's Unseen Hand was already pretty much the same shit we saw in Season 1, right? So, I don't know. It's a tiny little fucking hand. This tiny hand that's just good enough to wipe out Satala or Emilia's Tear Away, which is like a passage that's referred to often. What is there another one? The interesting theory is why. Is this still the Unseen Hand, even though the Witch Factors, the Authorities are supposed to warp and manip and, and turn into like the shape of one soul desire personality? Because it's Sloth. And Sloth is lazy as fuck. And that's why every Sloth user <laughs> has the invisible hands. I, I, I think that's a funny explanation. Who knows how true that could be. Her power then recruits him to their side to fight against Elsa. There's another thing too with how... I still think that just because, like, like, what does it mean to be chosen by the witch factor? I don't fucking know. 
it just means that when we use rental Goa, it just like, you know, picked him. Like, like, like Better Goose received the witch factor through Flugel, through a box. That box had the witch factor, but, and he consumed it like that. Subaru didn't, you know? We never saw this purple wriggly thing in season one. We have no clue when it actually, he became one. But it seems like when he used Rental Goa, and then he signed his fucking gospel with his blood. At that point, something happened. I still wonder how the signing of the blood into the gospel, like, plays into the story. Because I feel like that's such a significant impulse thing that Subaru often does. The Tape just sneaks in, and it has, like, huge implications for the story. But that's probably when it happened. And another thing... What was I thinking about? What was I thinking about? Oh, yeah. So, this is just cope for my end. There is no logic involved. There is, like, no logic, no evidence. This is just complete copium for me. Just because I love Subaru... I'm sorry. <laughs> I love Betergu so much. I want to believe that there's a fragment of Juice's soul that's embedded within Subaru. Through that witch factor. Somehow... Some way, Juice is still there, deep within Subaru, and you're gonna make a fucking comeback. That's right. Season 3, Juice is gonna fucking come out and possess Subaru, and then use Unseen Hand at a powerful level, and it's gonna- it, I don't fucking- I'm, I'm talking to my ass, right? This is my head- this is like my fan fiction at this point. <laughs> yeah, Juice, Skuna style. Exactly! Itadori Yuji, and then Juice takes over Skuna, you know? Like, oh, could you imagine? Like, when Subaru- Because like, he, he can't fucking fight with this fucking shitty ass Invisible Providence, but like, if Juice came out, maybe? I don't know, I- Again, it's just fan fiction at this point. Or ...then recruits him to their side to fight against Elsa. In the meantime, Amelia starts the trial of her past, revealing the tragic memories of her time in the Elior Forest. Wah, wah. They give shape to all her insecurities, as well as provide context to those deeply rooted feelings of inadequacy she has. She is able to overcome these on her own, though, building Amelia up as someone who's not afraid anymore. Yeah. She isn't haunted by the mistakes made in her past, nor is she scared of the life that she could have had. She doesn't even flinch at the sight of what her future may bear, since at this point she's no longer afraid of her own potential. No. Instead, she's able to face each trial with confidence, and by the end is more than determined to forge her own path. This allows her to complete the trials and hey, dispel the barrier. But this is what Echidna wanted. Echidna, or should I say the Witch of Greed wanted, I guess? That's what she wanted! For the barrier to be broken, and now some sort of reactivation sequence, and Ryuzu body vessel, and bada bing bada boom, Omega is born. Here, subverting every expectation that Roswell had for her. Now, it's between all this that Roswell's obsession is finally made clear, revealing his whole motivation to revive Echidna. Yeah, That's simping. the ultimate goal he's pursuing, and- And the funniest part is, it's already happened. In a different way, it's not really Echidna, right? But it is her. It's the Witch of Greed that took off the soul, like, basically, Ryuzu Shima's body, right? The body went in, it's Omega, Omega's fucking out! What are, you, what are you doing? It makes Roswell's pursuit of his goal even more sad, does it not? And there's only one soul! It, 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 it's, it's not, like, what are you gonna do? I guess the corpse is still back then, like, what, wait, resurrected? What, what soul is gonna go in there? That's the, that's, that's, that's the part... Because, like, the Witch of Greed and the Kidna, this, is this a split personality thing like Sato and Witch of Envy, or is there actually two separate souls? Because at this point, Omega is out. Roswell literally spent so much fucking time doing this shit, and he doesn't even know that his girl that he was simping for is out right now as a lolly, just fucking around. And in order to achieve it, he'll sacrifice anything. This makes him become more proactive in bringing about Subaru's downfall, but Ram and Puck intervene to stop him. Meanwhile, Garfield, Otto, and Subaru head back to the mansion, settling once and for all the score with Elsa. Garfield takes her on in a 1v1, while Subaru saves Beatrice from her self-imposed isolation. He doesn't deny that he's not that person, but what he offers in exchange is the true companionship Beatrice so very desires. It's the first step towards this profound emotional connection between them, since for once someone wants Beatrice to live for herself. Initially, Beatrice doesn't want any of Couple it, times. but after a lot Many of persistence times. and a bit of self-reflection, 
eventually she accepts the hand Super's holding out to her, finally freeing her from the 400 year contract confining her. Never forget that they cut out Zombie Elsa. Zombie Elsa was a thing that they cut out from the anime, guys. This was the final piece to the puzzle of Season 2, since by gaining Beatrice's trust and unlocking her power, Subaru could go back to Sanctuary and save everyone. How the hell is he outrunning the bunnies here, though? That, that's the craziest part. It's not Al Shemak that's the craziest part. It's, it's that he somehow outran the bunnies here. Back to Sanctuary and save everyone. Bunny with slowest. Garfield's help, he was able to overcome the conflict at the mansion, and with Beatrice's, he was able to do the same at Sanctuary. Al Shamak. Thus, beating Roswell in the game he himself created and winning the bet he started against him. This places him on Amelia's side for good and finally establishes the Amelia camp as one cohesive unit. Yeah, I mean, Amelia camp is better than ever and their resume also, now that we've also subjug quote unquote subjugated the white rabbit. The white rabbit's not dead like the white whale, it's just in a different dimension that one day could be accessed, I think. I don't know, I don't think it's impossible, but things are looking better than ever. But Roswell pretty much says, like, he makes a promise that he won't sacrifice anyone in this room to further his plans. But at the end of the banquet, right, where Subaru gets knighted, Roswell also fucking mentions that, like, if anyone dies, right, like, if, if you've said that you're gonna make your cake and eat it too, as in, you're gonna make sure everyone fucking survives, there's not gonna be one person left behind, so... If anyone gets left behind, as in, or accidentally killed, or it's just a bad run, Roswell will reset that timeline. That, that is the implication. So, in the end, Amelia is a lot more capable than when she started, Subaru no longer relies on return by death for everything, and the threat of the archbishops are made loud and clear. Yeah. It's this, along with the royal selection, that sets up nicely the events for Season 3. What are these boomers thinking about? Like, I need... Bro, I just need one episode. Okay, one of my favorite things in One Piece, for example, is when Luffy and the group overcomes a huge arc, and there's this one chapter where new bounties are going around, and the entire world is, like, reacting to these heroic achievements of the Straw Hat Pirates and everyone else associated. And it, it's so hyped. It builds the fucking world. Everyone is glazing and getting hyped and like, oh my god. He beat this warlord? He beat this fucking Yonko, right? It, it's so hype. Take that into Read Zero World. I want to have an episode where even these fucking wise men of the council, right? These dudes that are basically Lugunica decision makers as well as the knights and the royals. Like, I, I, I want other people. Even in like Kararagi... Fucking Gusteko, fucking Valakia, to have them talk about Natsuki Subaru and the Amelia Cam and like glazing their achievement. Like shit like that would just go so hard to me. There's other people realizing the feats that's happening. Literal Jesus Christ is performing miracles. Two out of three great witch fiends dealt with and Betrugu's done. And the craziest thing is like Arc, th arc, sorry, arc uh, 5, right? Season 3, we're probably going to win that too. And I don't know how many Archbishops we're going to beat, but it's seeming like there's, there might be four there. Like, imagine we come out on top as soon as we do all this shit, we come home, and then immediately we go into that shit and we, and we also win that. Like, Emilia's camp has so much clout. Emilia's camp has so much just like results that they delivered. It's hard to see how any of these other three can compete. Crucia's looking good because she was involved with the White Whale subjugation. Same with Anastasia. But we got the White Rabbit and, you know, the fucking Better Goose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anastasia helped out with a bit too. Priscilla's dead last right now. Priscilla is straight up dead last. She has not contributed to fucking anything. So Emilia pretty much is in the lead. With Anastasia probably second place with Crucia right behind simply because she's lost her memories. And then Priscilla at the very bottom in terms of like result, in terms of achievement. But... Priscilla could just, <laughs> I don't know, what if she like takes all the credits for season 3? Wouldn't that be crazy? Like Priscilla somehow like clutches so fucking hard. Aldebrand is actually goaded and like something insane happens in Arc 5, Priscilla's group like takes all the credit. That'd be fucking crazy. Who's, who knows? I don't know. It'll be good to see a Subaru who's a lot more capable of leadership and an Amelia who's far more confident in her abilities. Garfield's past is something that'll come to the forefront too, so it'll be good to understand the feelings that he has towards his mother. 
In short, they were initially resentment because he thought she abandoned him, but after doing the trial himself, he became a lot more understanding. That's pretty much all the things worth highlighting, so that's everything about Season 2 for you. Alright, in terms of Garfield and Subaru importance, I, I think that there's something um, still unsettled between Garfield and Subaru. Not as in there's any dispute between them, but of how Echidna, or should I say Omega, was mentioning that there's like a deep hatred in, still in Garfield, and how Garfield and Subaru one day will have to go against him. This is all cut content. Who could that him be? There's a lot of different characters, right? Maybe it's a character that we've never seen before, but I feel like the mysteries are not over yet. Much all the things worth highlighting, so that's everything about Season 2 for you. Okay. Now, if you liked the video, then leave a like. Hell and if yeah. If you want to see Season 3 content, then be sure to subscribe. Hell yeah. I'll be doing weekly videos. Guys, please go check out Mr. Any News. Here it is. Here's the link. Check out his channel. Go like the video. Sub to him. Check out his content, and I will see you guys next time. Hopefully next time is the actual reaction. Who knows?